This week's episode is brought to you by Transcend Company. Transcend Company is an online anti-aging company that provides testosterone and peptide therapy to clients all over the United States. All of your doctor's visits happen via Zoom from the comfort, convenience, and privacy of your own home. I've been a client for over three years, and one of my all-time favorite peptides is called Dihexa. It's a brain peptide capsule that has been FDA-approved to actually regrow your brain cells. I've also experimented with supplementing other peptides for recovery, sleep, Sleep, and it's been a huge game changer for my energy, my focus, my recovery, my overall quality of life. A lot of people don't realize how much better that you can feel and function when your levels are optimal. I want to live a life that's optimal, not just normal. If you want more information about optimizing your lifestyle with peptides or testosterone therapy, I want you to go to transcendcompany.com backslash Steve Weatherford. Enjoy this week's episode. Arise, champion! This is the world famous Steve Weatherford Show, where each week we bring you stories, messages, and guests to create massive breakthroughs in your life. Somebody say greatness! This show has been strategically designed to accelerate you. Call a friend and tell him Steve Weatherford is home. All right, champions, welcome back to another episode of the Steve Weatherford Show, and I just want you to know that I'm not creating this content right now because I want to entertain you. I'm creating this content right now. I'm putting it on YouTube. I'm putting it on Spotify. I'm putting it on all these different platforms because I'm praying and believing that the time that I'm investing in right now that I spent in in preparation is going to be a seed for the fertile soil of your life that in the areas of your health, your wealth, and your relationships, not that things would improve a little bit, that things would transformationally and radically transform to the point that all of the people that are near to your life are asking you the question, what did you do? What did you change? And how did you pray that you're experiencing the life of health, wealth, and relationships that you're experiencing right now. So dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. God, we declare you as King Holy Spirit. We ask that you would go before us. God, that you would shift and change any words that I need to shift and change as I deliver them. God, that they would be your words that they would hear and they would not be mine. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So you've seen the title of this podcast episode. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to ask my editor, Dylan, if he'll pop up onto the screen some images of the four levels and the four things that I want to teach you here in these next couple of minutes that I absolutely, truly believe that if you can grasp this and you can learn this theory, that it will unlock your health, and you'll be able to do things and look in a way that you've never looked before. I believe that in your wealth, how much money you have, how much money you create, the revenue streams that you have, the businesses that you launch, I believe that you learn these four levels and these four things. I believe that that will transform, and I believe that your relationships, your marriage, your leadership, tactics, style, and, and, and come from will all transform and change if you can learn, and not just learn, but if you can apply these four things, these four levels that I'm going to share with you. So before I get into sharing with you the four different levels, I want you to think about athletes like Michael Jordan. If you're my age, there was nobody better. Um, and for some of you men and women that are a little bit younger, how about Steph Curry? Or how about Tom Brady? When you watch these athletes perform the skill that they are pro in, it almost seems effortless. You watch it and it's like, that's really what the definition of an expert is, is they're able to make complex movements and skills seem effortless. And so I'm, as I'm someone who can also speak from experience because it is not my opinion. It is the statistical fact that I was at one point, one of the greatest athletes at my position in my industry in the world. And so I can speak to the top level that I'm going to explain to you. We all want to get to. And here's the deal. I've achieved it in, in physical fitness or maybe in the skill of football. But then I look at the other areas of my life and I, I realize 
how not pro level I am in some of these different areas. And so as I explain these four things that I've learned, that I've applied, that have helped me to create mastery in in different areas of my life, and I'm also in the pursuit in other areas, like in my marriage, I would not say that I am a pro level husband. No, I'm definitely training myself to be. But when I compare my ability as an athlete to my ability as a husband, buddy, I'm just telling you right now, I'm not even in the top 100 husbands in Frisco, Texas, but I guarantee I'm the best athlete in Frisco, Texas, and that's not a shot at anybody else. That's a fact, bro. I have mastery in that level and in that area. I've gotten to the point where when I was in the NFL, it didn't matter what time of day or whether or not I had warmed up. If you threw me a ball, a football, I was automatically going to mold the ball in my hand without even thinking about it into the mold that I needed to hold the ball in order to punt it. It just became second nature. Anytime I would catch a football, it would instantly, the ball would just slide into exactly where it was supposed to be. Why? Because I did it tens of thousands of times. And that's why when you watch Michael Jordan or you watch Steph Curry, sure that they They have athletic ability and they have a gift. But the reason Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan or Steph Curry are as unbelievable to watch as they are is because of the repetition that they they have taken those different skills to. And so when it's game seven in the NBA finals or it's Super Bowl 46 and they're snapping me the ball and my team and all of the fans are are counting on me to pin Tom Brady and the New England Patriots inside of their own 10-yard line so we can win the Super Bowl, best believe that I'm, I'm relying on my muscle memory and something I've practiced thousands and thousands of times. I'm not thinking about it. So now that I've kind of set the context for what high-level mastery is, and I used athletes as an example because that's easy to see. I could also talk about one of my good friends, John Gordon. I mean, he's written like 27 bestseller books, and I was talking to him about what's his process of writing a book because I've been working on writing my, my book, my testimony, uh, for like over a year. And he tells me, I just take a two week vacation and I write the whole thing in two weeks. And I'm like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, but don't compare yourself to me. He said, I've got a process and I've really worked it out. Sorry, I've got a FaceTime. It's my friend, Josh. I'm going to answer it. Hey, hey, man, I've got I'm I'm recording a podcast right now. So but I wanted to answer the phone because, yeah, I love you a lot, man. But I'm going to call you after this. Yeah. All right. Thanks for letting me take that call. Um, I want to explain to you what these four levels are now. And I'm going to explain to you something that was created in psychology. And it's called the four stages of competence. In order for you to build a championship team or in order for you to be a championship player, you need three things. You need character. You need competency. And you need chemistry, right? And we're going to spend time on the second one. The second one is competencies. When you learn the four stages of of competencies and you learn where you're at in those, you have unlocked your ability for a clear and a direct path for mastery. And so the four stages of competency are really a learning model that relates to psychological states involved in the process of progressing from incompetence, meaning you freaking suck at something, to competence in a skill. And what I want you to be able to get to by learning what it is that I'm going to teach you right now is not to how to go from I suck until now I, I don't suck. I want you to go past I don't suck to I've become a master of this. I don't have to think about this. It is muscle memory. It is just second nature for me. So the four levels of competency are broken up this way. And this is the part on YouTube that if you're watching this, I'm going to pop up an image right now of the hierarchy of competency. And the first level of the hierarchy of competence is unconscious incompetence. Unconscious incompetence means you are blindly, 
unaware of the gaps and the blind spots that you have. Now, let's talk about ourselves as as an athlete, because that's a really easy example. When you are unconsciously incompetent, you don't know the areas that you suck. So in order for you to not suck in areas that you don't know that you suck in, somebody needs to help you get awareness. And once you get awareness to the areas that you suck at, all of a sudden you you become conscious of your incompetence, and that's the second level. So the first level is, man, I didn't know that I sucked. And then the second level is, I have found out I am consciously incompetent. And the third level, the third level is conscious competence. And I'll explain these four levels in depth in a moment, but I want to go through them quickly. Conscious competence. And then the fourth level is unconscious competence. That means I don't even have to think about it and I'm doing the right thing. So now that I've explained the four levels, I want to help explain to you how you can go from unconscious incompetence meaning I have gaps and I don't even know where they're at. How can you go from the base level all the way up to the top level to where it's second nature to you, to where it's mastery to you, to the point where people will pay you and monetize your skill or your competence based upon the level of your mastery. And that's what I have stepped into as a communicator. I have worked with mentors. I've done the deep inner work. And to be honest with you, I think the biggest unlock for me as a communicator is the fact that I used to care so much about what people's opinion of me were. And then I had a radical God moment and I followed this process of developing myself spiritually because I realized I got awareness to the areas that I sucked as a husband, as a father, as an entrepreneur, as a steward of the time, talents, and and treasures that God has given me. In order for me to get activated as a kingdom man of God, not just a Christian, but somebody who's building the kingdom of God, I needed somebody to come into my life and give me awareness to the gaps that I have. And so step one, in order for you to climb the four levels of competence, step one is you got to get awareness, aka find the gap find the gift. So what I mean when I say find the gap, find the gift, get awareness. First, you got to figure out what you're dealing with. And sometimes it's hard to see the ingredients, the specialness of who you are from inside of the own bottle, right? So there's, I'm going to tell you three ways that you can accomplish step one. The first way that you can get awareness, and this is the most difficult way, but it's also the free and the cheapest way. The first way that you can get awareness and and identify your gap and your gift is podcasts, like the one that you're listening to right now, free, and books. And a lot of the times, you can find the books for free, or you can do what I do. I subscribe to Audible, and I listen to four or five books per month. And with these podcasts and books, the ultimate goal is that those books and those podcasts are going to inspire you or instruct you to ask yourself the right questions so you can get the right awareness. The second way that you can get awareness and identify your gift and your gap is to ask your three closest friends, what are my gifts and what are my gaps? And keep it real with me. And the third way that you can get awareness is to do what I did. I actually did kind of a combination of all three of these. But the one that works most effectively and the one that I continuously do in my life is get a coach slash mentor. And the reason that this is most effective is when you do personal one-on-one coaching, your coach is able to walk you down a path He's able to ask you the right questions that gets you to think the right thoughts that lead you in the right direction. The greatest coaches don't tell you what to do. They ask you the right questions and lead you in the right direction. 
the three things that you want to do when you're identifying a coach and a mentor, and I'll just mention this really quickly because I've done a podcast on how to identify and select a mentor, but make sure that your coach and mentor has the fruit that you want and not just the theory, right? Don't choose a theoretical teacher mentor. Choose a transformational one, one that has the fruit of which he's coaching you on. Because there's a lot of fake gurus out there who will tell you how, how to coach you in business, but they've never had a successful business. The only successful business they've ever had is coaching other people on how to do their business. Come on, man. Where's your fruit? Number two, be willing to submit yourself to that coach and be unoffendable while being coached. If you're looking to not be offended, you really don't want to grow. And the third way to choose a coach and mentor is make sure that your coach and your mentor that you're submitted to is also submitted to God and another mentor that will keep you from being manipulated. Num step number two. So we just talked about the three ways that you can get awareness to identify what do I suck at and what are my gifts? Step number two, after you get awareness, you're going to want to get active. Don't just be the type of person that gets awareness and says, oh, now I know. This world is full of people that know the right thing to do. Information, guidance, and mentorship has never been easier or more free to get now than it ever has been before. Most people aren't struggling with the right things to do. They're struggling with infobesity. They know too much and they're paralyzed by too many instructors. Step number two is once you get awareness to where you suck and where you're gifted, get active in that. There's a verse in the Bible that says, ask and you will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. In every single one of those sentences from that scripture, it starts with a verb. A verb means action. Ask. If you, first, you've got to ask, a.k.a. get active. Ask, and you'll be given. Seek, a.k.a. get active, and you'll find. Knock, and the door will be opened. So after you get awareness, get active. Step number three, after you've gotten awareness and you got active, get accountable. There's a verse that I was looking at before this show. And it's Romans 14, 11 through 12. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. And this is the part I want you to hear. So then each of us will be given an account of himself to God. That is, that is God speaking to us, letting us know there will be a day where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And that day will also be a day where we must be accountable for ourselves to God. And so after you get awareness, after you get active, get accountable. Like realize that this life that we're living, if you and I get to live 100 years, that's amazing. But 100 years is like this long in eternity stretches off of the screen that you're watching on YouTube right now. This, this life is super important, but it's so small. And I want to share with you a quote that this isn't from the Bible. It's from one of my favorite movies, one of my favorite actors, Maximus Decimus Meridius, the movie Gladiator. And he says, what we do in this lifetime echoes through the halls of eternity. Even though that's not biblical, it's rooted in truth. So step number three is get accountable. And I would say, that would be the number one reason why, and I don't work with a lot of men. I work with about 10 men, one-on-one -on -one personal coaching per year. And I would say the number one reason why I'm inspired to work with 10 to 12 men every single year is that's the area that I put my time in that yields the greatest amount of fruit. You want to know why? is because every 14 days or some of the guys I work with every seven days, we get on a Zoom phone call and I make them be accountable to the things we talked about the last 14 days or the last seven days. And I treat them the way that my coach treated me. Where were you last week? Where was the breakdown? How can we fix it? And what's this next seven days going to look like? 
And it's accountability that creates transformation. And I'm not saying be accountable to a coach. Be accountable to God. That's what this verse in Romans is talking about. Is one day, it doesn't say you're going to be accountable to your mentor. It's gonna, it says that you're going to be accountable to God. Step number four. After you got awareness, you got active, you got accountable. Now step number four is get the fruit. AKA is you're moving up these different competencies levels. Once you get awareness, you're, you're, you're no longer unconsciously incompetent. All of a sudden, as soon as you get awareness, you graduate up to the next level and you become consciously incompetent. Even though you're not competent yet, you have awareness to it. But to get off of that level, you have to get active. If you get active, you'll no longer be consciously incompetent. You're practicing. And eventually, if you practice long enough and you be accountable long enough, you'll begin to create consistent fruit, aka you'll be consciously competent. And consciously competent means it requires my focus. I'm following a one, two, three. If somebody breaks my focus, I could make a mistake. And sometimes the results that I get are messy, but I'm definitely getting results. That's the third level up. And that comes from getting active and getting accountable. But to reach the next level, it's about being accountable. And that's why I believe that my, my time is best spent with the right people in an intimate one-on-one -on -one setting because I know that they're high caliber men who have influence and employees and a family. And once they get breakthrough, I believe that it's going to trickle down to so many different people. So they're fertile soil to me, but they're fertile soil. And I feel like I can really influence and, and almost control the results or the outcome by simply giving them guidance and keeping them accountable to the simple foundations of personal development. Step number four, get the fruit. Because once you become unconsciously competent and you reach the level of mastery where you don't have to think about stepping into a room and encouraging people, you've practiced it so much that when you walk into the room, it just comes out of you. It's second nature. It's muscle memory. And then people will begin to recruit you and want you to consult and be around them because everywhere that you go, that unconscious competency of encouragement or leadership or humility massively impacts people and it's not requiring a ton of energy or focus from you. Because you did the work, you learned the four things and the four levels that will unlock your health, it'll unlock your wealth, it'll unlock, unlock your relationships. And step four, when I say get the fruit, I mean be prepared to transform because once you get the fruit, now you can feed the people. So the first part of getting the fruit, the, the, the scripture that I wanted to share with you is Galatians 6, 9. Do not grow weary in doing good, for in due season you will reap if you don't give up. And there's the key word, guys, to this whole process of becoming a master at something. Don't give up. It says in scripture, this is a promise from God. Dude, let this get tattooed on your heart. Do not grow weary in doing good. Once you get awareness to something that you suck at and you begin to practice it and become accountable to it, you know that it's a good thing. So this is God saying, don't grow weary in doing that good thing because in due season, you will reap if you don't give up. That's the key at the end. So if you can just decide, I wanna live a life of getting awareness to the areas that I'm weak in and that I have gaps in, and then I want to dedicate my life to overcoming them and becoming more like Christ because that's the top level. You know, if you look at the, all these different areas of life, if we, if we modeled after anything or anyone, it's got to be Jesus because he's the only perfect one. He's the son of God. He never made a mistake. He lived for 33 years. In three years, he did 33 miracles, brought people back from the dead, defeated the grave, helped people walk on water, fight, Fed 5,000 with, with fish and, and bread, just a basket. Come on, man. He spent time with God and God helped him to get that awareness. So I gave you a bunch of practical and tactical ways of how you can improve the natural portions of your life, health, wealth, and relationships. But I'm just here to tell you, 
If you use this information to build your kingdom and not his, it's just a fair warning. You're going to do what I did. You're going to get to the top of the ladder of success and you're going to realize your ladder is leaning on the wrong thing. If you're, if your foundation is not in Jesus Christ, I'm giving you tools to help you improve a life that's leading you straight to hell. And I don't want that to happen, man. I like I've already decided, man, I'm planting my freak flag in front of the gates of hell, unapologetically being who God created me to be, unashamedly sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe that eventually, if you're not ready for a relationship, and I'm not talking about a religion, if you're not ready for a relationship with Jesus right now, this video is going to live on YouTube. And I want you to bookmark it or share it, subscribe to this show. Just allow there to be a chance that you can come back to this video and pray a simple prayer. That God, I repent of my sins and the mistakes that I've made. And right now I want to lay down my trauma, my mistakes, my shame, my guilt, my addictions. I want to lay them at the feet of Jesus. And I want your forgiveness, God. And I need Jesus to come live in my heart, to be my Savior and to be my Lord. And I need the Holy Spirit to fill me, to convict me, to comfort me, and to lead me. And when you're ready to pray that prayer, I want you to come back and pray this prayer that we're about to pray right now. But thank you for listening to this show. Super important to me that you, that you live a life of significance and not just a life of success. But I believe that there's a divine convergence where you can step into your calling, you step into your anointing, and I believe that there's success and there's significance right in the middle of all of that because that's where Jesus is. So these are the four things that you can learn that will help you to unlock those areas. And I pray and believe that eventually you're going to reach a moment in your life where you're realizing that everything that you're experiencing or achieving is nothing without Jesus. So if you don't have a relationship with Jesus or you're listening to this podcast, and you're like, man, I'm actually getting some consciousness to my incompetence to my relationship, not a religion, but my relationship with Jesus. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. God, I love you. God, I don't understand all of the mysteries of who you are, but I know that you love me. And so right now I repent of my sins and I ask that you would forgive me, that you would take my burdens, my bondage, my addictions, my shame, and my generational curses. And I pray that you would give me Jesus, that Jesus has permission to come into my heart, to lead me, to heal my heart, to extend the borders of my heart, and that your Holy Spirit would fill me and guide me and be my comforter and my leader. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Thanks for listening to this show. Thanks for watching this show. If you're watching on YouTube, we're putting a lot more effort into building our audience on YouTube because we're understanding that that's where there's a lot of people that are searching, literally searching. So one of the ways that helps people to find us and to find the truth, um, and that's Jesus, is if you like this video, if you leave comments, if you share this with people, and also if you subscribe and put on your notifications, and that way you'll get an alert every time we drop a podcast on Wednesday. And I'm coming up with a new goal and a content routine for 2024 that you're going to be getting more than one podcast episode from me uh, per week. But right now, every seven days, we're coming in hot, and we'll see you next week on The Steve Weatherford Show. This week's episode is brought to you by Oxfit XS1. What's an XS1? It's without a doubt the most advanced and sophisticated exercise platform that I've ever seen. I actually have this exact unit in my home. The Oxfit XS1 blows my mind because of the capability and the durability. This is an at-home fitness platform that is industrial enough for me to max out my squat, my bench, and my deadlift with a real barbell in my hands. And it also has radical features like a rower, a ski erg, and live fitness classes on a massive three-foot touchscreen display. For more information, go to oxfit.com. And thanks for listening to the Steve Weatherford Show.